I've got a bunch of foam, I have the desire to make something, and no immediate idea of what that will be. So that's what we're doing today. And this is your friendly reminder that this video was made before last week's video, but when I made this video, I had no idea I was gonna be making last week's video, so there's not gonna be any references to it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society, and I know I wanna make something. I've got the foam. It's all pieces from my scrap bin, and uh, I'm gonna make something today. That is the only premise for this video. I can't tell you what it's gonna be right now, so with no further ado, let's just dive in to start organizing some foam and seeing what we come up with. Okay, so I have this one inch thick stuff. I've got two different colors of the two inch thick stuff. I mean, I'm sure I have other sizes and things too, but this is what I pulled out of the scrap bin right away. So what I am currently thinking is if I take a piece like this and do that, and then I run a piece like this, and I run a piece like this, I can make like an arena looking thing, or maybe it's like a, I don't wanna say like a stage, but like, you know, stairs are coming up this way and then up to a platform and then stairs that go up kind of all directions. And then it would be like that and then you'd have the upper platform up here. Let's see. Well, you know what? That's as good of an idea as any. I'm gonna run with that. I'm gonna make some cuts and then we're gonna see where we are after I get this stuff all organized up. So here is what I came up with. So I've got three blocks that are two inches tall by three inches by six inches. They are going to go like this. Then I've got a three inch by six inch by one inch thick piece. That's gonna slot in here like this. Then I've got two pieces. You can see I'm using scrap here. This one is hopefully gonna get covered up, but we'll see here in a minute. But then these will go like this. And so what I'm envisioning is that there's gonna be stairs that run around there and here. And then there'll be stairs here and here. Although part of me is now thinking that maybe I don't even want stairs in here. But then that will all kind of lead its way up to this upper platform, which you know could be used for a variety of different things. So then the next thing that I need to do is I need to start getting all of this stuff textured and I'm gonna texture it before I glue it in place because if I glue it in place, then it's weird getting tools and stuff down in all the nooks and crannies. Before I jump into the time lapse, I think this is actually a pretty useful bit of information. So in order to save myself time and effort of what I need to texture and what I don't need to texture, I took a quick second and ran through with a pencil and just X'd out all of the areas that aren't going to need textured. So for example, this side of this pink piece here is gonna have stairs there. So you're not gonna ever see anything there. That's just gonna be foam glued onto foam. So I don't need to texture that side. Same with here, same with there, same with there. Now on this front piece, that area is gonna be blocked and that area is gonna be blocked, but this section is going to be visible because I did decide not to put any stairs there. So all of this side, that center section there, and this section will need textured. On this piece, obviously this needs textured, this doesn't and this doesn't, but this doesn't, this doesn't, and that doesn't because they're all going to fit in like that. It's a little quick step that will save me time so I don't have to texture all of every single piece. Sometimes that's useful. So I started by carving my block texture into the outside of this piece. And I've talked about this on the channel, I think a reasonable amount of times. Carving block texture is not something that I am a huge 
huge fan of. I would rather just cut the bricks and glue them myself, but once in a while, I get the urge to do a little foam sculpting, and that's what I decided to do this time. I think also some of it stems from laziness, because sometimes I would rather just begrudge through the carving of the blocks instead of just cutting out blocks, because I just don't feel like cutting out blocks. But that ended up leading me into this design where I've got blocks on the sides with these pillars that kind of break up that block texture. And I just think that this looks absolutely fantastic. For my level of carving work, I could not be more pleased with this. The next thing that I needed to do was move on to the stairs. And actually, I'm just going to brush over this because I did a whole video on how I did this stair concept. You can go check that out on the channel if you want more specifics. But this is my favorite way to do stairs. I don't know if I said stones or stairs there, but just so we're clear, that last bit was all about stairs. <laughs> um, in this case, stone stairs but still stairs. And it was once I started working on the stairs that this happened. So I didn't realize how quickly I was working. And as I got right here, I realized that this little section where I made three steps that would go up and then my next little section where I made four stairs go up, I didn't realize that they were too far away from the top. I measured them out and they looked good before I tumbled my stones, but then the stones must have gotten squished down flatter as I tumbled them. So now these top stairs are too big. Problem solving time, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just cut down another stair up here and I'm going to carve that into this and then hopefully that will look reasonable enough on either side and then with the carved stone up top, then I will move on from there. This is what I came up with for that and I feel that it looks absolutely okay. Would I have preferred to get the measurements right the first time? Absolutely, but I think this looks just fine and I really do think that once I get paint on it, it will be very hard to notice and then that'll make me feel better about it. But the last thing I had to do to get this sculpt all finished up is I had to do the top blocks on here and I will just be real with you all. By the time I got to this stage, I just felt myself losing steam. Carving block texture, like I said, is just not something that I really love. So by the time I got here, I felt myself starting to, I don't know what the right term is, but, but just wane off of the idea of really doing a super, super great job. And I'm pretty sure that if I wasn't under the time crunch of a video, I would have told myself to just step off and do it another time when I was more engaged. But it looks perfectly fine, good enough. I made sure to make the block on the outside kind of roll up onto the top so you could see what the three dimensional shapes of the exterior blocks are. I love that, I think that worked out well. And again, this piece was designed with a super, super flat top, so I'm gonna be able to put stuff on top of it, and I think that that will break up this kind of mediocre looking stone texture anyway. The sides are really what are going to be bare and take the most of your visual experience of it, I guess. So then that means that I needed the sides to be better than I needed the top. Plus, I also wanted the top nice and flat so that I can put miniatures on it. Those are all my excuses as to why I only did this amount of texturing on the top. Uh, but now that that's all done, this is what I've got. I like it. I think it's definitely gonna be useful. I'm gonna move on to painting it. I'm not gonna do anything special here. All I'm going to do is start with my Black Magic Craft base coat. That's just a 50-50 mixture of matte acrylic craft paint and matte Mod Podge. That is going to give me my nice dark undertone and then I'm gonna paint that up with three colors of gray with the exception of the pillars, which I'm going to paint up in a khaki kind of a color just to get a little bit of visual diversity. This is a paint scheme that I've covered a thousand times on the channel and I'm not going to bore anybody with that, but if you are interested in how I did it, you can check out my Lazy Crafter's Guide to Painting Terrain video. That will help you out to do exactly what I'm doing right here. So I'm going to start this off by saying I am not going to claim that anything that I built today is going to break the internet or shatter anyone's perception of what is possible with crafting. But with that said, I can say that I'm very pleased with the result of what I got. This is an interesting little piece that probably is not going to hit the table every single time that I play, but what's that matter? 
It's a cool little piece. I mean, technically I probably could have built this out of something that I already had, but it would have been made out of a bunch of fragmented little pieces that would all get easily bumped around. And now this is one solid piece. But uh, with that said, I super appreciate you watching and this is what happens when you just play around with foam and see what you get. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, definitely do all of the YouTube stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it because that's the number one way that you can help out small YouTube channels. Comment below of a project that you've done like this or something else that I could do like this that would be fun and quick to throw together. I don't think I told you to like the video. That's the last YouTube thing. Uh, so other than that, until next week, I'll be seeing you. It's pretty cool. I mean, really, it neat.